This vacation, I'm heading south to the charming open air cafes of Hangzhou. And all of this frolicking by the lake makes me wonder. Why is it that I find Chinese men so fascinating? So masculine and so very sexy. I just can't seem to get over this obsession with Chinese men. So I'm going to talk to the one person who might be able to analyze my neurosis. Dr. Peter Lowenberg, historian, psychoanalyst, and my father. I'm so glad to see you. Yeah. How nice that you're here. This isn't my dad's first trip to Hangzhou. So we're making some time to chat about my family's past in China and my prospects for the future. So you're looking at your map of Hangzhou. Of yeah. Hangzhou. Now this is a map from September 1935 that my parents brought along. They took me here when I was a little boy. <laughs> Let me ask you a psychoanalytic question. What do you think my obsession with finding a Chinese husband has to do with my relationship with my father and his relationship with his mother? I think you have some identification with your father's Chinese childhood. What's your image of uh, Western men, American men, Chinese men? Okay, okay now we're moving on. Jewish so, men? <laughs> so, uh, back to Shanghai. You like Israelis? I really like Israelis. I think they're so gentle, you know. My dad didn't just come back to talk about my personal life. This is the first time he's been back to Hangzhou since he was a little boy in the 1930s. My grandparents fled Germany when Hitler came to power, so he spent his early childhood in China. And just like the black and white photos my grandfather took of Hangzhou so many years ago, my father's stories make history seem personal. Yeah, well, Adolf Hitler came to power on January 30th, 1933. I was born in August. In April, all Jewish state employees lost their jobs. My father was at the university in Hamburg and in government service. Yeah, he was a psychiatrist and he traveled around Europe to see if there were places that were suitable to go. I, I have a book where his addresses, he visited Holland and Great Britain, uh, Scotland, and then he listed places where a German physician could practice without further examination. Um, places like Ethiopia, Tangiers, Yemen, Persia. So you could have ended up in any of those places? Could have, and he decided on Shanghai. Uh, they took the train down from Hamburg through Germany and they stopped and visited his sister, Annette, and Ernst Jacob in Augsburg, and... I was named after Annette, right? Annette, right. Annette and Sophie is yes, your mom. that's okay. right. And they said, well, you don't want to go to Asia with the child. Leave him here, and you can come and get him. We'll take good care of him, and uh, you can come and get him sometime in the future. Fortunately, my parents didn't go for that because they stayed there. He was the chief rabbi of Augsburg until Kristallnacht, uh, November 9, 10, 1938, when he was arrested and sent to Buchenwald. Did they even know what they were gonna find when they got here? Did he, did no. he have a guaranteed position? Did no. he have a job? They didn't know anyone. And in fact, when he arrived in Shanghai, he had an acute appendicitis and had to have an appendectomy for starters. Uh, mm. uh, no, I really admire the 
courage and, and fortitude. Uh, they just decided they had to leave Germany and Europe. That Nazism was a serious threat, there was going to be a war. The fantasy, they'd build a new life in China. And they did. I want to know what China was like for my grandparents back then. How did they feel about Shanghai? Was it as exciting a place, as full of possibilities, as my Beijing is today? Before I came to China, my dad's childhood here seemed as long ago and far away as another lifetime. But now that I call it home, it makes me wonder, just how is his past influencing my future? So much time has gone by since my father's early years in China that even he can't answer all of my questions. So we've decided to move our little reunion to Shanghai to try to find my family's old house and hopefully more about the lives they once lived there. Well, he opened a practice in uh, the Hamilton house. My grandfather spent those years working as a psychiatrist in Shanghai. He was also an avid photographer and left these photos of his Chinese patients. And we lived in, on the Route Vallon, 240 Route Vallon in the French concession. <laughs> the closer we get, the more we marvel at how much has changed in Shanghai since the 1930s. We'd go down to the Bund and the Wangpo River was just busy with traffic. So many junks and ships on it, it was like you could almost walk across it. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of trade going on. What's this guy selling? Shabakas. Look, look. This house, this name is not And we can't help but wonder if the old house even exists at all, or if it's been reduced to a pile of rubble to make way for the new Shanghai. Road. So this used to be Route Vallon. Uh oh, this whole thing is torn down. Uh oh. I hope it's still here. God. Yeah. We may be in the rebuilding Shanghai mode here. 